You're in a good place now. Relax, breathe, smile. You've entered into your element, the home of origin, the home of intelligence and beauty, where relevant topics are discussed, where what you think counts, and where superior is the norm. You are listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. You know, FYI, you know you create your own reality. On tonight's show, we're talking about how you actually create your own reality. And we're giving you some tips on how to create the best reality ever. I think that's pretty cool. Bill, how are you doing? You know, I'm doing wonderful and, uh, you know, trying to live reality each day. And uh, so <laughs> I am, uh, you know, especially... I'm glad you're trying. I'm trying. I don't always succeed, but I'm trying. So I'm uh, I'm interested to hear how I can live my best reality. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well. I just don't know how I ended up with all this stuff in the studio here. I got I got flashlights. But, uh, that's, I, got I was gonna Kermit say it, frog. it's too bad that we don't have a camera here in the studio where uh, our listeners can see us as well as hear us. I mean, what was that? Two two Kermit the Frogs. You have Fozzie Bear. You have Miss Piggy. You have water, water, and water. Water, water, and water. And three tea, waters. Some some iced tea. Flashlight. White tea. Uh, White a, tea. A school bell. A teacher's bell. Yeah. And a half of a cookie. And half of a cookie. And Eric's right here. He's hanging out. Yeah, I'm hanging out. I'm a little concerned, though, um, because, you know. <laughs> a little you, concerned? Yeah, a little concerned. Do we need, do folks need to have a license to create these realities? Because some people's a creations. Permit? Yeah, permit, man. Because some people's creations may be a bit of a challenge. We'll be selling those permits after the show, actually. Well, so it's I, a reality permit? I, I think we need it, first of all. If you listen to this show, you, got my permit. you officially are eligible for a reality permit. How's that? I like it. All right, let's do it. I like it. We can help them go through all the paperwork and all all the filing. That's it. That's it. The permit filing and the lines and the, and the this and the that and the city things and the this and the that and the those. So we're talking about how you create your own reality. Okay? It's true. I know. It's been revealed. Oh, my gosh. We all create our own reality. What are we going to do next? Seriously, we all Holy create that our own reality. <gasps> Holy reality, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> no, she said it all dramatically, you know, like the uh, you, you know Batman showed or something like that. Batman. You know? da, 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 you da, create da, da, your own reality. Da, da. Okay, yeah. Anyway. Uh, okay. <laughs> moving right along. Moving on along. Moving on up. Moving on out. So we're talking about how you can create your own reality. We know that. So we're going to go on with that factual evidence here for this show. If you don't believe it, check it out. What you've been doing this whole time, you've been creating. That's what we do on this planet. That's what humans are made to do is to create. Create. That's what we do. So let's talk about how can you create the best reality ever for you. And I want to start with the concept of choosing. Do you choose happiness or do you choose to be unhappy? And to me, that's a paramount bedrock option when it comes to choosing our reality. From creating our reality. Do we choose to be happy? Do we choose to be happy about our surroundings and happy about ourselves or do we choose to be really unhappy because that's going to formulate one reality or another straight up to the point and believe it or not i mean on the surface of that you would think well golly i mean of course i would choose to be happy who would choose to be unhappy some people make a conscious decision to be unhappy if you can believe it and and sure it's like i almost can't believe it when i hear myself say it but it's absolutely true, and I know several people who fall in that category. Yeah. And, you know, some people are just, I mean, and I understand this. I, I come across it a lot. A lot of people are very, they're very comfortable in their own uh, their own uncomfortable comfort zones. <laughs> and, and what I'm saying here is that a lot of times our environment can kind of react on us as children. And so if we were raised in a home that maybe people were very unhappy all the time, mm-hmm. very argumentative, very woe is me. That can extrapolate into our life as adults, and it's hard to see the forest of the trees. And so we have to accept to some degree that it's okay to be happy. And I think that's another duality in this lifetime, too, is that sometimes people don't think it's okay to be happy. They don't think they deserve it. Yeah. Yeah, they don't. Happiness is foreign to them. And I I grew up in an environment. uh, My home was, you know, it was like most homes, but... I grew up in a community to where I had friends, little friends. We were kids or whatnot, and, and you knew they came from an unhappy home. And some of the times that they were the most joyful was when they were away from their home and we were playing um, you know, at the park and doing that kind of stuff. But I would see the kids who would come from that kind of environment and see how that weighed on them. 
they carried the burdens of adults as little kids. And so if that's all you've known, then most of the time, unless there's some type of pivot or transition, that's what you'll create. And that's an unfortunate thing. And, and I think a lot of times, too, you know, by the way you're raised and by the people that you actually um, gather around is also a good determination of, of your happiness level. I mean, and because I've been around people that when I've been happy, I almost felt weird about being happy and light around them because it seemed like they had so much trauma and drama going on in their life that it seemed uncool almost. Or, like, like rubbing it in their face. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so you yeah. sit there and you're like, they're like, how was your day? Oh, it's okay. You know, it was, like, you know, it was almost like the Seinfeld episode where uh, George uh, likes to look like he's always working really hard because he knows that if he's working really hard, so every when people talk to him, he's like, oh, oh, what a day. And so people just assume, oh, my God, this guy's working really hard. And a lot of times in life we do that to create what have you because we feel like maybe being too happy might be the wrong thing. And that's sad. That That's so sad. I, I you know, I and I remember times because I grew up, you know, again, in a household. We had challenges. I mean, we didn't have the best of things. And and I had very young parents. And so we struggled. And and I would see, you know, my parents would be unhappy. My mother would be unhappy. And and I avoided that, you know, as a kid. I ran from that. And even today as an adult, um, you know, I, I do the same thing. And and one of the things that I decided to do as a kid was create my own realities at an early age because I didn't want to recreate what I experienced um, in certain aspects. Not all of it was bad, but the bad parts, you know what I said, I can create something different, especially as a parent. I like that. And and so I I think that, you know, seeking and choosing happiness over unhappiness is a successful way of creating an awesome reality. You know, I think next is the idea of seeking help, seeking help or not seeking help in life. Um, You know, when you need help to do something, some of us have a tendency, and I've done this for a long time, to shy away from help. You don't want help. I can do it on my own. You know, and a lot of times, yeah, you can. And then there's sometimes you can't. You just can't. I mean, you need help. And, and, and you know, you don't want to ask for help. It's like, you know, when people drive around over and over again looking for a place, they don't want to ask for directions. And the mo- the wife is angry at the husband. And why can't you just pull over? Why can't we just? Nowadays, why can't you just use your iPhone? Why can't you just go to Maps and put the address in? Why? Which, Why? That particular part I have no problem with because I have no sense of direction. So I have to have directions in front of me to know where I'm going. But, uh, but yeah, I, I can relate to that, Ashley. I hate asking for help for anything. And uh, it, it, it's something I've gotten better at as I've gotten older. Uh, but, uh, I just, even to this day, I just, uh, it makes me nervous whenever I think I have to ask for help, even on just the most mundane things, you know, silly things. You know what gets me, Bill, this is funny that you brought that up. What gets me is when, um, when I'm under the weather, okay, for example, when I've had surgeries in the past, right? When you have a major medical surgery mm. and you go home, you know, after a couple of days of being in the hospital, I have the toughest time asking for help and there's sometimes where i've yeah. been out of bed or i i did not need to be out of bed and yeah. i'm over there seeing if i can make something in the kitchen <laughs> you know what i mean and i'm making a mess and i'm with the iv stuff. still in and, your and, arm and knowing you like i do <laughs> ashley knowing you like i do i can totally see you oh i'm over there like uh, uh, you know nothing happened you she's know? on painkillers actually you know, she's on painkillers wobbling can, through the house i can see her passing out not not, not even uh, getting to the house i can see her still in the hospital Oh w- yeah. Wanted to go make her own meals or, you know, uh, wash her own clothes or you I know. get bored and want to like meet other patients. Yeah. Like let me, let's go down the hall and meet some other patients. And they're like, <laughs> No, dude, you need to stay in bed. You can we have a catheter. You can't even get out of bed. You don't even go in immediately. But I have actually been at my at the house like trying to cook food and I shouldn't have been up and you pass right out on the floor. Yeah. You know, thank God he didn't break anything, your head open or anything like that. And everybody's like, what the heck are you doing? And it's like, I don't need any help from anybody because you feel bad. You feel like you're weak. But there comes a time in everybody's life that eventually they're going to need help from somebody. Yeah. You know, that's a base human thing, though, I think that's prevalent in a lot of folks. It, I don't know how active it is, but it, it's at least prevalent under the skin in that, you know, it's a survival thing. Um, you know, it's funny, Ashley, you said that. I thought about a few of my surgeries. I had reconstructive shoulder surgery and that's what ended my college career and i remember painful yeah extremely painful i mean they had to reattach my shoulder to the rest of my body um but you know it's the the price of a gladiator but you know it's funny um try having reconstructive surgery your arms tied to your body and then try taking a bath 
<laughs> try taking a shower. And I'll never forget the first time I tried to do it, man. I'm wobbling through the house, still in a haze from the painkillers. And my mother's like, son, you can't do this. And I'm like, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I refused to help. But ultimately, I needed the help because I was going to be stinky the whole time if I didn't take a bath. <laughs> so. Ultimately, you passed out in the shower and needed someone to get you out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Right. I mean, yeah, or pass out because of the BO, maybe. So <laughs> Stinky. You should have gotten some dreads then at that point. Oh, that would have been nice. That would be cool. You could add nice that to the, to the uh, ensemble. Yeah. So, you know, when we return, we're going to be talking about more about how we can create our own reality and how we can do it in a really, really awesome way. So stay tuned because Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in, we'll be back in two shakes. Turn it up and jump in the deep end on Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. The water's warm and there's a swim up bar. Glass of perspective, anyone? Now, here's Ashley. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. On tonight's show, we're talking about, guess what? You create your own reality. FYI, peeps, you create your own reality. You create it. And guess what? We're talking about tonight about how you can actually create your best reality ever. Right before the break, we were discussing the concept of choosing happiness over unhappiness, as well as seeking help versus not seeking help. Sometimes you ultimately need help from other people. And, you know, we're human beings. It's a race of people that thrive by being around other human beings. That's part of our culture. That's part of our genetic feeling and makeup. And so sometimes you have to ask for help. And it's not showing that you don't have it. It's not showing that, you know, oh, you're not good enough. It's showing that, heck, I know what I'm good at, what I need help with, and I know that you can help me on this. And it's an interchange of experience, but it's also an interchange of help. And I think a lot of times when you don't ask for help, it's like me. You know, you, you wait until you're you're bedridden yeah. and you're stuck. And you're stuck and you don't know what to do. So let's move on from there. So seeking help is a good way of creating an awesome reality. You know, the next thing I like to talk about is to help others. Do yeah. we choose to help others? Or do we choose not to help others? And I've seen some people literally stand back when other people are at peril. And they literally stand back. And, I, and I'm just amazed. I'm amazed that they do that because there's no way I can't help. I've got to get in there. If somebody asks me for help, for the most part, I'm going to help. Right. And, and, you know, of course, in my opinion, sometimes you do it to a fault. I can remember you wanted to go, approach this uh, homeless guy who was oh, talking I ended to up himself. Going- Oh, oh I, not that guy. Yeah, not, yeah, not that guy. It's the other homeless so, guy. You know, it's the homeless guy's I'm neighbor. Going, I'm certainly going, Ashley, you don't know if he's got some weapon on him or <laughs> You're like, like but, no. But anyway, no, I, I, I also, I know people like that too who are just, you know, they're uni- they are their own universe. They're their own god of their own universe. Yeah, and, and they're not going to help exists. anybody. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, you, you, the, society isn't made that way we're all interconnected to some degree or humanity another. is not you know made that way no and, man is an island yeah, yeah. No, no man is an island or a woman either i, I mean so. and, and you guys or know me. yeah you guys know me. oh i thought you meant no man is a woman <laughs> well no man is a woman and no woman is a man you know so it, you know well, that makes sense so <laughs> well, some, some could be but we're not i don't know because right I mean, you create your own reality okay you're yeah. allowed to create what you want yeah no no i get it um you know and you guys know me well enough and some of the listeners have heard before i to me personally and this is my own uh, deal, but um, and I'm sure it's shared with a few others, or hopefully so. But the highest manifestation for me, as a human being, um, is service to others, and it's sometimes counterintuitive for the personality that you talked about, Bill, that selfish island personality. But for me, the most that I felt alive, and not to a degree of fault, to where I'm giving too much of myself, but the most that I've ever felt alive is when I'm being of service. Um, to something greater to myself or others outside of myself, and, um, and and that's that's the key term right there: service greater than yourself. Yeah, you know, I think all human beings have this sense of that, that capacity. There's something bigger than you, you know the sum is bigger than than the uh, or the whole is bigger than the sum of its parts. Sure, right? um, and uh, some people choose to 
uh, you know, express that belief through, say, religious expression, well, or some choose to, uh, you know, do so in like a charitable expression. Yeah, when I help know? others, it puts my life in perspective. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times, like the things that, that that we find as problems in our life seems to be put in perspective when you're helping somebody find shelter, for example. You know what I'm saying? If somebody doesn't have a place to live. If somebody doesn't have food to feed their children, it puts it in perspective the fight you might have had at the studio yesterday or whatever it might be. And that's I mean, and I, and I don't help people just to put things in perspective, but I help people because I think that makes a well-rounded individual. Which is the soul of this show and which is one of the, the, the core reasons why I enjoy doing this show, because ultimately we're using a format we're using a technological format um, and, and being able to listen to us through all the different channels that we have. We're using multiple technological formats to um, uh, help others sharpen uh, or uncover or sharpen their perspective on life, which ultimately helps them um, in this in this race that we're in. Well, speaking of, of which, Ashley, the technological uh, formats, uh, what would those technological formats be if somebody wanted to listen yes, to past yes. shows? Oh, before, I was, I was going to say one thing, though. You know, <laughs> remember when you're, when, uh, okay, I'm trying to set you up here. You know when people say, you know, like the sharpest tool in the shed? If you listen to this, you're going to be the sharpest tool in the shed. It's so not a Sharpest joke. knife in the drawer. So you're sharpening it up. You're sharpening I'm, your I'm, mental I'm, and emotional capabilities. But, yes. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> we are on iTunes. We are on Spreaker. <laughs> We're on AshleyBurgess.com. You can listen to us on demand on all three of those. Just put in Ashley, Ashley Burgess, or, Spre- or Spreaker, or Perspectives, and guess what? You're going to be able to hear us, and that's what's pretty cool about it. Or you can demand to listen to us. Or you can demand. <laughs> or you can just turn your dial. We will come to your well, house, and we will talk to you, and just call us, and, and we'll just, parties, bar mitzvahs, anything. Just call us up. We're there. There you go. Da, 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 but that's da, cool, da, Ashley. Da, da, that, that's, that's a new layer. That, that's a new layer. I can, I, can, I can get down with the best of them. So. We're here to party. I can get down with the best and of them. Perspectives but. crew. <laughs> <laughs> we're the crew, man. We're the band. We're What's bringing. Where's pers- our alcohol? Did you bring the beer? Did you bring the cake? No, we brought perspective. We brought perspective. And the clowns. The best of all. And some freaky clowns that they're going to have. And, and, oh, and the Muppets. It. Not the clowns. Dun, 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 we brought our Muppet toys. Hi ho, Kermit the Frog. <laughs> Kermit. I, I haven't really tried to do a good Kermit, but I will actually work on that. Well, I mean, research it. Actually, you should be able to do because you do a good Yoda. Yeah. I, I think Yoda and Kermit are kind of like, like, do your Yoda. Oh, he wants me to do it like He oh, always man. wants to do it. Every- <clears throat> Mm, funny you are. <laughs> yeah, see, there you go. Is that is that pretty good? I feel so interstellar. <laughs> Use the force. Use the force. <sighs> I feel Use so interstellar. Harmony. <laughs> Harmony is and and it's a precursor to the new Star Trek, the Star Wars movie coming out. Yes, December twenty fifteen. Can't wait. Can't wait. Can't, can't wait. wait. Okay, y'all. I'm 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 gonna right. be able to wait. I, I can wait because otherwise I'm gonna be here with bated breath, and I'm gonna hold my <laughs> I'm gonna hold my breath, and I'm gonna be blue because I create my own reality. And when it comes into my reality, it's okay. That's just, real. I was gonna say, okay, sidebar over. Back to reality. That's real. Back to reality. <laughs> that is reality. Back to though. creating reality. <laughs> Kermit is reality. Kermit is reality. It's my reality. Yes. <laughs> it's all good. It's Your all green good. world. It's all good in, in my hood. <laughs> Your frog it's, hood. It's not easy. Being green. green. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. As Bill has a green screen behind him in the studio. That's it? so great. That's so great. We need to use that more. We need to get Di in here to use that more. So, yeah, so let's talk about Di. I mean, Dominique, not not, not Di. Not, not, We're not, not going to die. And dismember yeah. We're not going to dye ourselves green, right? Yeah. No. I'm so, not. You can. I'm not. You know, we should try that. I actually have some hair dye. It's like a spray on stuff that we got for a Halloween thing a couple years ago. We never used it. Let's try it out. I've we can try a, it on like a patch. I've got and a br- we'll see what happens. Ashley, I've got a brown base, Small so that patch. may not work out too well. Not at all. I may turn into emerald. Ooh, you put the green over my brown base, Ooh, I'll turn into it'll emerald. It'll be like that black emerald color that they have like for BMW. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Which, black sapphire is what it's called. It black, looks like black, and then it's like an emerald color when you get close nice. to it. Nice. And that's a cosmic color. You know that, right? You put, you put mocha and you put some green on it. That's a cosmic color. That's a cosmic color. It is. It's a color of moldavite. Ooh, you moldavite. already know. You already know. Powerful. Powerful. Hundreds of millions of years ago, when meteors hit the Earth, they created a thing called like a glass stone that we call moldavite. People call it meteorite type material, but That's it's it. glass. Some of it's sand glass. So they have a Libyan tektite, which was in Libya, where it's yellow. You have Libya's me- in Africa. 
Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is. We have in Libya, which is yellow. <laughs> no, what are you talking about? Yellow. I'm, that's, <laughs> go ahead, I'm messing with the you. color of the material is yellow, not the people, <laughs> but the material. <laughs> the meteorite, which is a uh, moldavite, which comes in different other places, is green, and so a lot of it's translucent green, and then some of it in Tibet is black. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, and shout out to our, he couldn't be here tonight. Shout out to our boy Keenan. We're getting a science lesson here. Yeah, yeah. And I actually collect that stuff. So yeah, I get it. Yeah, I'm big yeah. into the stones and, and the, the and, power of the stones. And from all of that emerged Eric. <laughs> and I created Eric with a cauldron and a couple of meteorite pieces and Libyan tech type, which was yellow, and, and, <laughs> and saw that it was good in the evening <laughs> in the morning for the second day. <laughs> and, and harmony and harmony was was and I ever rested present. On and, 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 and rested on the second day. You rested on the second day, and thus e harmony became reality. I rested with a mambo of beer, <laughs> and I rested, and I wasn't. I, I didn't keep it up for the seven days, so I, I did the second day rest. You know, I mean, you got to somebody's got to get some R and R sometime. There was no day spa around. I'll tell you that. Where are the day spars when you're looking for them? I know. <laughs> I mean, out in the middle of nowhere, o- back in the times. OMG. There was no day spas in Bethlehem, I'll tell you O-M-G. that. OMG. everywhere. Looked O-M-G. everywhere. I mean, a chocolate scrub, nothing L- nothing to be had. Looked high and low. Looked high and low. Looked in the middle. Looked behind. Looked in front. Nothing. Nothing. So I made my own reality. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and I visualized a spa. Now, when we return, we're going to be talking more about how you create your own reality and how you can actually create... Your best reality ever. Stay tuned because Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in we'll be back in two shakes. This is Jake Busey, and you're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. FYI, you know what? You create your own reality. You are constantly creating your own reality. And on tonight's show, we're explaining how you can create your best reality ever. You know, right before the break, we were discussing about how we can help others or choose not to help others. And that's an integral part of creating a happy, healthy reality. I choose to help as many people as I can. And and, and I do that because I know that things are, um, they're cyclical. I know that things are in, in a circle. I understand that. Good things come to those who do do good things, as well as I know what makes me feel good. And and I, and I like doing good things for people. At the same point in time, I, I'm a human person. I like other humans. I like helping people. I like learning from people. I like engaging in conversations and deep thought and emotion with other people. And and that's kind of, it's kind of a thing for me. So let's move on to the concept of are we embracing what we have or are we fighting what we have? Interesting. Interesting. Embracing or fighting? Which I know people who do both. At the and, same time? Well, it may, yeah. I mean, sometimes at the same time, yeah. But uh, I think I saw Muhammad Ali do that in a fight, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hold him down and then beat him in the His name is George way. Foreman. Yeah, yeah. It's George Foreman, right? Yeah. 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 Hold him against the ropes and beat him it's in the head. It's called a rope-a-dope, right? Yeah. But, but no, I mean, I, I know people who, you know, they're just constantly fighting what's you know, you know their reality and uh, it, and the things they're trying to do, instead of trying to deal with it, you know, kind of rolling with it, and uh, you know maybe manipulating it to uh, achieve the ends they want to achieve. You know, they just you know it's like you know oh I can't stand this and you know rah, 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 and and you, you try to help them. Life is sucking. It's just like, it's yeah. killing me a bad hand. You know, oh, everybody's out to get me, and I'm gonna, I'm going to fight. The you, system. you know, you know the example I'm going to use. You know, uh, remember the coworker from hell? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, who's just was so miserable yeah. that she made everyone else around her miserable, and it, it was just, it was horrible to try to work with her. Well, because she was fighting everything. Yeah. She was you know? fighting being happy, too. She, so she, she's fighting she, inside as well. Eric, Eric, if she was one of those people that you, you didn't ask her how... You know, normally, when you greet somebody for the first time of the day... How are you? How's your day? How's, how are you? How's, yeah. how's things going? You didn't ask her that because she would tell you. And it was never a happy story. Yeah. Poor so, child. Poor child. And, but you know, the interesting thing about that is that that had absolutely nothing to do with you because she was creating her own reality. <laughs> okay, which had actually, boy was she ever yeah, and and unfortunately that reality was a was a negative uh, reality, and 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 you know that's unfortunate. But you know I I just think it you know one of the things that I try to share with my children, you know at an early early age, um, especially my girls, but uh, all my children at an early age, 
is that you have the power, you know, and, and, and we use the term kind of jokingly, kind of societally jokingly and, you know, you know, pointing back to the 60s and the whole black power movement. But power to the people means something. It means something on several levels. And and that simply means that the power is within the people. A system exists, but ultimately the people have power over the system if they understand that power. And so in this case, the system is self and you have power over the system of self if you so choose to use that power. And so power to the people every time power to the people. And are you embracing your power or are you fighting it? Are you embracing it or fighting it? The personal power we have. A lot of times we like, try to say that we don't have it. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I mean, because uh, what you said is right, because Eric hit the, the main point there. Uh, you have the power if you choose to use it. If you choose to acknowledge that you have it. Yes. A- and that power multiplies, interestingly enough, if you choose, if you use it for good. Okay. If you use it for good. You that, can use it for either. You can use it for either. But if you use it for good, it replenishes. Why? Because you, you get to Ashley's point in helping others, you get fulfilled from that. And so as your glass becomes empty or on the way of being empty, it is fulfilled in a circular motion. Why? Because you're doing good for other people, and so you're never empty and you're constantly fulfilled. And that's powerful if you really think about that. Think about that. Well, it's also, you know, like the video games where it's like, remember like Super Mario Brothers and all that stuff back in the day where you keep leveling up? I call that level up. Like when you do good for others and you do what's right, level up. and you help people, you level up. And you know how you get like life? You know how your life level would be at a certain level and, and you do things and it would increase your life level? It kind of reminds me of that in a way because, you know, when you're doing good things and you're doing what's right, you know, you're getting something from it too. And it's amazing to see how much energy and how much goodness comes from that because it's a direct reflection. I mean, it's like a boomerang. You know, like the boomerang, you throw it back, you throw it and it comes back. It's supposed but, to. If you throw it right. I mean, some people just throw it into the dirt and it's but, not, not going to come back. But. but the key is you don't do it expecting a return. You, well, you, you can't even do it with that in mind. It, it, it's not an A to B. It's not a, you know what I'm saying? It's not an A to B. And you're right. It, it's an A and we will see. It's an A and let it go. And let it go. You know, let it go. And, and and I agree with you. And some people do it because they want to get something back. And again, that's not going to work to their advantage either, because that means that you're doing it with strings attached. With strings attached. Well, yeah. I mean, and, you know, of course, you know that uh, I'm interested in uh, comparative religions, uh, Ashley. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, th- that's that's one of the things that uh, uh, Jesus Christ uh, preached heavily about. Uh, it was against the Pharisees. Doing things on the outside, on the, on the external, to be seen doing these things. Be when, seen looking good. Yeah, you know. Now, you could also, uh, you know, say that's a Buddhist, uh, you know, karma uh, principle. You know, if you, you do the things that will, uh, you, you know, if, if you do them for, for good without necessarily expecting anything in return, then that's going to give you good karma. But if, if you do things expecting a return and let you know okay hey look at me you know i'm in the ambient pew then uh you know that's going to result in bad karma bill that's a that's a good point let me ask you this um since you 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 do study that if you boiled every religion down uh to its core essence to its basic core essence would it be true uh true to say that religions have more in common than they do uh, 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 uncommon most religions have way more in common and it's those differences that provoke because you know religious belief is the most powerful belief that human beings have people sure. people are literally willing to kill o- o- over the, over their over their religious beliefs because they believe that that they're serving their their divine but they're you know, dividing up power. society. They're dividing up humanity. That that's the thing that gets to me. It's like if this is all peaceful and this is right, that everybody should come together in all religious sects and say we're all going to the same which, direction. Which which goes to my point of of essence. And when you look at the essence of those religions, again, you realize that there's more in common than there are differences. Another and way so, you can put and, essence and, is reality. Exactly. The so reality if you, of those. If, if you micro that down to the individual. It's the exact same dynamic. When you boil the individual down to his or her, his or her's essence, then we all have more in common than we do. Far more in common than, than, than we don't. Uh, than, than, than I mean, because here, here's the thing. You know, it's it's if you study comparative religions, it's actually eerie 
how many concepts there are that, that uh, most world religions have in common. Well, it, they all come it, from the same source. Hold on, hold on. It'll, it'll make the hair on your neck. They all come from the same source. Eerie or comforting. I find that comforting. Both. Well, both. Yeah, both. I it, find, it's I find, eerie at first yeah. because it's like, wow, you know, is that a coincidence? You I know? find it I mean, comforting because it points to a singularity of, of, of existence. It points to uh, a singularity. Uh, and a commonness that we all share either through religious, the essence of religion, or through the essence of us as individuals. Um, and that's, that's, that's really cool. I think there's a difference, though, between religion, religion and belief. I, I think you can believe— There it, can be. There, and and my, there can my, be. my issue, too, with church, too, and let's go to another concept of creating your reality within this subcontext, is that you can sit on the first row at church every Sunday. The amen pew. Okay? Or— and, and, and you're doing it because you want to show off or you want to prove to everybody else that you're there. Or on the flip side, you can be doing the deeds and following through with being the right person, doing the right things, being a human person, being authentic, being real. But you might not be making it to church. Okay? And, and, and that's the key is that a lot of times it's showy. And, and if you want to go to church because it's good for you, because you appreciate it, because you know friends, because you're helping people get, you know, the word – a, a good word and a positive message, that's one thing. However, if you're just doing that to show off, that's just another way of showing off. I mean, you might as well, you know, drive down the main thoroughfare going 10 miles an hour with your windows down, showing yep. everybody your new car. You're, you're, and, you're, you're and, low rider. And, yeah. that, and that's in any facet uh, of, of, of human ex- existence. If you're not doing it for the core authentic reasons, then you leave yourself open to bastardize um, the experience of the platform. Bastardize. Or, and to put it in <laughs> another that. way, you will get bad karma. Yeah, and, and you no. know what? It doesn't help you. It doesn't fulfill you. That's doesn't. the thing is, that, like, Ultimately, boasting it doesn't. and showing never fulfills us. It just kind of drains us. My, my, my happiest moments have been the moments that were not seen by another human being uh, in reaching Amen out. Amen to that. Exactly, in, in reaching to out that. to another or, or what have you. My happiest moments have been the moments that have not been collectively experience moments with other human beings nice i like that that's nice and 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 i can say that i've had those experiences as well when we return we're going to talk about more about how we create our own reality and how you can create your best reality yet so stay tuned because perspectives with your host me ashley burgess will be back in we'll be back in two shakes i can lift you up I can show you what you want to see and take you where you want to be. Get in here and give us your perspective. We're listening. You're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. This is how you see things. This is amazing. It's a gigantic pain in the ass, but it has its moments. This game doesn't happen until October. It's always October and November and March. So many futures, and they're all real. Just don't know which one will coalesce. Until then, they're all happening. Like this one, it's my favorite moment in human history. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I am your host, Ashley Burgess. You know what? Guess what? FYI, if you didn't know it yet, but you find out now that you create your own reality. You actually create your own reality. And I think most of the people listening tonight actually know that, which is so cool. And if you didn't know it, now you know. But we're talking about how you can actually create your best reality ever. The best reality you can create we're talking about tonight. And being that you can create it and that you actually created, we're giving you the tips on how to do it right. So right before the break, we were talking about embracing or fighting your personal power. You know, whether you're giving it away to others, whether you believe that you don't have it, or whether you're embracing that power and realizing just like what we're talking about, that you have the option of creating your own reality. I I watch a lot of Facebook posts and I watch a lot of social media and everybody thinks that there's other people that are um, opposition, that are oppressing them, that are causing them pain. When in actuality, when you step back and realize it's really us that cause our own pain. The man is holding me down. Man, you know who the man is? It's you. (laughs) You're all new You are the man. You are the man. And, And you know what's so funny is nobody else has to hold you down if you're holding yourself down. I mean, if you're drowning yourself, I don't have to worry about drowning you. I mean, you know, life's tough, tough enough when you're your worst enemy. Well, you know, Ashley, let me let me ask you this question, um, and maybe I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but you know, you're jumping ahead. No, okay, <laughs> well, okay, that, that, go ahead, go ahead. That, that settles out there. Um, in pr- the process of creating your own reality, where's the fine line between creating your own reality and creating your own fantasy that you think is reality? 
<laughs> did, did I just, did I just get it? That's interesting. Your own fantasy. Did, did, do, I, do I get a gold star for today? You get a good gold Thank star. You. What about a platinum star? Platinum star. Because in this All universe, right. we've created that platinum is better than gold, right? And there you get a you package go. of gummy bears. Because, I, I mean. I want gummy bears. <laughs> Dude, I want, I want the Harbo gummy bears, or the ones that are Harbo, I, not, I the, not, never, the, not the fake ones. I have never liked gummy bears. No, not the really? fake ones. You the haven't the had the Colorado ones. gummy they're, bears. They're, they're the real gummy. ones. Oh, the real ones. And, and, okay. I, and I like those little, the fruit basket, you know, the little fruits. Yeah. And then the gummy Coca-Colas. Yeah. And the gummy raspberry and blackberries, you remember those? Mm. Mm. Or the gummy peaches? Mm. Oh, I never had those very much. Oh, the gummy no, oh, well, cause, sweetest cause, fish. See, because I had I had braces uh, when I was a kid, so they, they I always told you don't. That didn't eat. hold me back. Well, it didn't mean this. <laughs> they, I, That's gonna hold me down. They, they showed me the pictures uh, when I got my braces. They showed me the pictures of all the you know people with bad teeth after they got their braces because they didn't take care of them, and uh, that scared me. So I use that crazy loop uh, floss. You remember the loop floss? Yes. it was a loop at the end. In and you pull it through the braces. Yeah, I use that. I went to lots of ends of the earth to chew my gummy stuff, but I always clean my teeth. But it took like thirty minutes. Ashley, you put a lot of effort into creating your own gummy reality, I didn't did. you? I love gummy, but now I just I don't need it anymore. <laughs> and it's not good for me. Sure. Yeah, yeah I won't be right just for like a week. Shirt there. <laughs> so you're creating a new reality. So. A healthier, healthier reality. A healthier but we reality. love we love gummies, but yeah, yeah healthier reality. I don't think gummies good for the digestion. No, it's not. I think it's kind of like a stopper. Yeah. So, so let, let me uh, let me ask you this question, Ashley. I mean, uh, you know, as as I'm trying to actually be have a serious conversation, everybody's laughing at me here. Um, <laughs> that's what we do here. That's what we do here, we're that's, that's we're we do here. You, Bill. We're laughing with you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, yeah keep saying that. Uh huh. You, you, you know, you, you keep might saying be that. With, uh, with <laughs> smack. <laughs> Remember, I control your mics. Just remember that. It, it, this could be perspectives with Bill if, if you're not careful here. He's okay, created Bill. a new, he's created uh, a new and reality. I, and, 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 I'll, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll create my own reality, have my own radio show. The Church of Bill. That's right. Keeping it real with Bill. That's right. You know, Get bl- real. Blessed are you. Getting real in the house. With Bill. So. Looking like a fool with your pants on the ground. <laughs> Go ahead. Where did that come from? <laughs> Talk, talk about reality and fantasy here. I think you've to- gone totally off into the La La Land. <laughs> Golly. I think I just snorted. I think you did, too. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to our realities here. Okay, go back to our reality. Our, our, uh, these are realities, but we'll go back to our actual intelligent realities. Our right? intelligent reality. Okay, <laughs> so so my question for you is, uh, in the process of trying to create your own reality, you have to keep it realistic, you know, does that make sense? I mean, otherwise you tend to go off into fantasy. You know, but that... The, the way you want it to be, not actually how it is. But that's actually what we're kind of talking about, is that to a degree, to a degree, what we want is completely possible. Yeah. Now... But but do you understand where I'm coming from on that? Yeah. But fantasy, but wait, fantasy. Wait, 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 I mean, do you, I think all of us at the table here know people who willingly stick their heads in the sand when they have situations that they're going through in their lives. Yeah, symbolically, yes. Okay. Yeah, I know a couple of and, ostr- and ostriches. They close yeah. the and blinds. They don't want to wake more, up. They ostr- don't want any light in the room. They don't people, want to deal yeah, with I know that, ostrich That's people. more where I'm coming from is is that, uh, you, you know, the, uh, the you know people who are like the $100,000 millionaires, you know, for example, um, you know, who who live beyond their means and, and you know, and they just, they just like put their ear, hands over their ears, la, 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 la. They're, they're not dealing with reality. You know, it, it's okay to, you know, have somewhere you, where you want to go and what you want your reality to be but i think uh, uh, oh, so you're saying, from a starting okay. point you have to be realistic and, and we're not and, and i think i think really beginning this concept is it's not all about money and, and yeah money is a facet, oh, that's just an example but you, you but you're right but you have to do i believe that i, I believe that I, I there's points of what you're saying i i see really honestly though a lot of times we dumb down the things that actually are really real in this universe. Like the things that are really uniquely, solely real, we take for granted. Like the concept that people can get into their heart space and actually meditate from in that space seems insane. To some people, there's no way. There's no way that you can do that. And I think on that level, sky is the li- well, the sky is not the limit either. I, I really think that what we believe in our heart, if, if you're coming from a healthy, a healthy mindset, yep. If you're coming from a healthy mindset, authentic, authentic and connected, 
there's certain things that you can't explain. There's certain things that just seem almost surreal that are real. But then on the other side, I see what you're saying is that if you're living a false life, a not real life, based on looks, perceptions, props, based on props, based on appearances, based on the items that I have, it's like you're um, propping yourself up on these things instead of on yourself. And I think a lot of times when people lose, they don't, they never knew that they had the power they have. They never knew that they have the ability to shine. And so they use these items to show others how great they are when in actuality their power is within. I mean, the most powerful people in the world can stand there with absolutely nothing and, and derive respect from, from the masses. You know what I'm saying? But I, I think that a lot of times, like what you're saying, is that a lot of times people use items to project their reality. And, 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 and I think that that's part of a non-reality. Items are fleeting. These things are made. These things are You, you can't them. really take it with you. You can't. And that's not really part of your reality. You, I consider reality a lot of times in this situation of creating your own reality is, yeah, you can have what you want. You can do what you want. But we're really talking about the you within. Yeah. Well, he, 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 go, go ahead, Bill. Well, I, I was, I was going to say real quick, Eric, another example, you know, I, I used a monetary example. Another example you, you could use is relationships where one it's maybe a toxic relationship and one person chooses to believe, oh, you know, this person's going to get better. You know, he, he's, uh, he or she's not going to be. So they're believing fake. They're, 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 they're looking toward right. the wrong direction. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just going to say, you know, let's macro this up um, and look at it in terms um, a, 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 of a shared reality. Um, this country that we live in, America, it was an idea. Okay, all America is. The, the it, only country on earth where yeah. it's it, it's not ethnically based. Yeah, it's not ethnically based. America is an idea. It's an aspiration. Uh, uh, you know, it's a fantasy, uh, not in a negative sense, but it was a fantasy to create, um, you know, a beacon of light on the hill where all men are created equal and all of that kind of stuff. And so, um, you know, it's possible. It's all possible. America didn't exist. America existed in the collective minds of people. And now we live in this reality, this shared reality today. Well, and, and I, uh, to, to take that concept further, I mean, uh, you know, the the, uh, the country is founded upon uh, you know certain principles and, and even ideologies. Sure, sure. We, we didn't live up to those principles then, and we're still not totally living up to those principles, uh, yeah, but, but, you, but we're you, striving. Exactly, 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 you know? exactly. So sometimes yep. it fits and starts, uh, you know, kind of one step forward, two steps back sometimes. But, uh, but as a collective reality of human beings yeah. over time, um, this is an interesting model. And you're 100 percent right. We we failed in, in, in so many ways. I can't even can't even name them all. But the but 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 the but the courage to create a new reality will ultimately reward the courage to create a new reality will ultimately reward. Yes, and to be able to look at a reality and create it in your own way, in your own shape, with an authentic, with an authentic thought process. When we return, we're going to be talking more about how to create your perfect reality. Well, not perfect, but your best reality. Yet. Yes. Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. We'll be back in. Uh, we'll be back in two shakes. <laughs> You're in a good place now. Relax, breathe, smile. You've entered into your element, the home of origin, the home of intelligence and beauty, where relevant topics are discussed, where what you think counts, and where superior is the norm. You are listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. And by now, I believe that you probably realize that you create your own reality. You know, we've been talking about creating reality, but on this show, particularly tonight, we're talking about how you can create your best reality. Because there are certain things that you can do to ensure a good life, to ensure yourself being happy, being content, finding happiness, and opening your mind to various perspectives. Uh, right before the break, we were discussing embracing or fighting our personal power. And I'd like to move into a new category. 500, please. What is it? Category on Jeopardy? 500, please. Um, new category for 500, Alex, please. Ding! Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> is the scarcity... Versus abundance principle. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. A lot of times we tend to see things as is not enough available. If so-and-so gets a raise or if so-and-so gets their dream job or if so-and-so comes into money, uh, well, uh, oh, God. 
You know, oh, well, there's less for me. And it was funny, right on the break, um, I actually have a friend of mine that just texted me and got a show on a California station. All right. And Sweet. I was very stoked. And yeah. some people would say, oh, okay. I, that was I, my time slot. That was mine. But I was thinking, you know, I've had her on my show. It'll be great to be out there. You know, our show's not there yet. We're, you know, it's, it's not in that particular Still location. Still working on it, yeah. So it's pretty cool. But a lot of times people see that as scarcity. Oh, they got that, so there's less for me. In other yeah. words, the pie is finite, and yes. it's a zero-sum game. You know, So if, if, if I get more, that means Ashley gets less. Linear. Linear. Yeah. That's linear. Yeah, and that's what a lot of people come from, though, right? A linear mentality. A lot of people, a lot of us look at scarcity. And I've had to really look and examine myself on things that I've been fearful of, things that I've looked at people, kind of, oh, well, they always get all the breaks, you know? And I've had to literally look back at that and say, hey, that doesn't really matter. There's a lot to go around. Yeah. And if yeah. I see there's a lot to go around, I'm going to get some too. Yeah, I mean, I, I think of it in, in terms of, of being a father. Um, it used to terrify me, you know, early on when I was like, you know, hey, we're having another kid, and I got three for all the listeners out there. And right when I think that I don't, I won't have enough, enough resources. Kids are expensive, for God's sake. Daughters are expensive. Uh, enough uh, emotional time. Uh, enough of physical energy. Um, right when I think that I'm going to run out. Um, the more I give, the more I receive uh, in return. So that, it, that that whole scarcity versus plenty, it, it's counterintuitive. Um, and, and I think it's counterintuitive for a reason, because it takes courage um, to push it. It takes courage to open yourself up. It takes courage to pour yourself out, not knowing for sure if you'll be fulfilled again. But the, the trick is, you will be. And I think it's important to note, too, that uh, I think a lot of people misunderstand courage. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is the mastering of fear. Mm -hmm. You know, o only a sociopath has no fear. Okay? Um, you know, all of us have fear, and especially fear of the unknown, which is the greatest fear of humankind, which I've said on previous shows, and you can go to uh, various technological program uh, platforms to listen to our previous shows. You can go on iTunes, look at Perspectives with Ashley Burgess, go on Spreaker. It's really easy. If you are on, currently on Facebook, all you have to do is go to Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, -E -E and click on that and go and find us and listen to us on demand. You, you guys are so cute when you do your plugs. You, you. You're so happy when you do your plugs. I mean, it, it's like... it's like it's, we, we, We've got it down to an art. It's like Captain and Tennille. There you go. I mean, it's like you guys are... Love just, will keep you, us together. Exactly, man. I mean, the, 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 these promos, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing. We're, we go together. They're like peas and carrots. Peas and carrots again, Jenny. Me, me and Ashley. It's a beautiful thing, and I'm just a, I'm just a stick in it all. Yeah, so. staring it up. You know, absorbing stare it. Stare it up. And I'm and, sorry. and wishing. Little darling, stare, stare it up. <laughs> because we're taking, you know, more of the pie, and that's leaving less for you. So you're just kind of feeling left out, aren't you? It's cool, man. I'm cool with it. <laughs> I, I know I'm if cool. it's pecan or apple pie. I because be, because I know pecan, because delicious. if I know if you guys get the big pie, a brother's going to eat. Yay! Like that, huh? There you go. Like that. I like Slices for everybody. Yeah, I like it. Slices for everybody. I even slipped in some ethnic terming terminology. <laughs> Brother's gonna eat. You know? Brother's gonna eat. That felt good. Brother gonna eat. Mm. Shout, shout out yeah. to our boy Keenan. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so the scarcity principle. So you know, thinking that you're not there's not gonna be enough to go around is is a self fulfilling prophecy of not having enough. You know, if you realize that, you know, there is enough to go around and it's not based on, you know, other people doing well and you're not going to get it. I mean, you can actually allow your life. It's a lot easier to live because otherwise you're putting limitations and barriers on what you can get based on something that you made up in your own mind. Yeah, I, you know, it, it's funny. And I, again, I'll go back to my uh, football uh, reference because I, I think sport uh, to a very high degree is a microcosm of human dynamics. And and it would be foolish for me as a defensive player if my teammate made the tackle before I did for me to be upset or jealous of my teammate because he made the tackle. We're all got, we've all got one goal in mind, which is to stop the offense. So what you do is that you celebrate your teammate making the tackle because by creating that environment of celebration, it opens up or at least inspires others to play at that same high level. Think about that. And think about that in terms of life. If I were to not celebrate Ashley's success or to hate on Bill's success, ultimately what does that do for us as a team? It creates a negative environment. Well, and it creates, it creates not a team. 
it creates it's, not it's, a team. It's, yeah, it's, exactly. uh, it's, it's individuals, you know, kind yeah. of looking out for for themselves. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's it's. Uh, it, it, but I think, do think, unfortunately, it's human nature to you know try to gain things at other people's expenses. You know, but you got to say, you know, the grass is not always greener on the other side. Which, yeah, I, I, I which. Don't... Actually, is another uh, you know thing that Ashley did. I'll huh? let you do that one, Bill. Love <laughs> will keep us together. No, we did do the grass is greener series. Love will right. keep us together. Because a lot of times, that's another thought, and that's something we need to talk about too. When you create your own reality, we can't be looking at everybody else thinking that their life is better. And and lately with social media, social media, especially Instagram, oh my god, Instagram for sure has Bro. become a playground for everybody's life is better than mine. Oh. Insta sham, insta sham, insta sham. <laughs> it's a sham yeah. because people. That's a good one. That I just came one. up with that. You guys dig that? Wow, I'm right I do. That. I, I think we should cha- we change the name of it right now. Insta sham. Yeah, insta sham. Because yeah. people don't realize, and, and they don't realize what's going on. They don't realize it. They take the photo for face value. You know what's so funny about life is that magicians. A magician is funny. Like, I, I like, there's a lot of magicians out there that I like. David Copperfield is one of my favorites. It's funny, though, how the human condition, how humans love magic. And the funnier, funniest, funniest thing about the whole deal is that people like to be tricked. And they don't necessarily want to know how you did it. And that's just another form of tricking people is when you look at social media, especially right before you go to bed or right when you get up in the morning and you see, ah, oh, Oh, look at that house. Oh, look at all that. Oh, oh, geez. My life's never going to compare to that. Oh, they must have taken this trip to wherever. And a lot of times, and the grass is never greener, by the way. I I would not ever want to live someone else's life. And I mean, I've thought about it. I've thought about it. You know, I told you about that time when I asked my friend, this was years ago, I asked my friend, if he could trade uh, lives with anybody, who would he trade his life with right then? And he said, well, obviously Michael Jackson. Uh I don't see, yeah, he, he said he traded When Michael. was this, by the way, before or after? It happened to be uh, the day of his death. Oh, wow. wow. That's eerie. So that was kind of eerie. So I said, really? And he said, yeah, and we talked about it. And about two and a half hours later, after they had already left, I get a call. He's like, you killed Michael Jackson <laughs> to prove a point. <laughs> and the thing is, is that I would not trade my life with anybody because you have no idea what they're going through. And just to think that their life is better that's BS, and and that's all coined in our mind to make us feel lesser, to feel, oh, well, my life isn't as good. Because, you know, Ashley, if, if our listeners do go to YouTube, and they go to your YouTube channel, Ashley Burgess, on YouTube, and they watch the Grass is Greener series, one of the things they're going to get out of it is that a lot of times people put up a facade. So what you're seeing a lot of times is what others want you to see. Yes. Okay? Not actually the reality you know, like you know, kind of like the Wizard of Oz. You know, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. They want to show the best of the best of the best. Of right. You know, I mean, they're going to show what they want to show, and it might take thirty takes to take that picture. Yeah, it, it's all marketing. It was funny. I, I my, my oldest daughter, uh, you know, was fortunate enough. Uh, she's of the age, and you know, got her a car. And it's been a while since I've been car shopping, and you know, car shopping for a teenager is an interesting journey, if you will. But, <laughs> but I remember, God bless you. I know, I know it's a tough world and uh, God bless all the drivers out there when the teenagers are on the road. But, um, <laughs> let you me know, know when they're driving. Yeah. We would look at cars online and, and what would they show bill? What would they show? Ashley? they showed the best angle. Oh, okay. Yeah. They, they showed the left front fender angle at 45 degrees. Okay. But you know, the other degrees were dents and bumps and tires missing and cigarette stains and all of that so so you got to be able to filter through all of that um and look at the heart of it and and even as individuals i think there's nothing wrong with showing the real authentic self because we're all we all have challenges we all do so stop faking the funk and stop buying into that one angle you know stop buying into everybody else's perfect angle when you feel imperfect, because there is no perfection. But in order to really have a reality that's awesome, you have to be able to look in the mirror and, and express and, and accept who you are and not always trying to live up to a standard that doesn't actually exist, because that's not reality. I mean, you know, Earth to everybody listening, social media is so far from reality, it, it, it's a joke. Amen. It's a joke. And, and, and it's sad because there's a lot of people that are coming into my office with depression and and, and and with a lot of other issues right now, it's based on social media and feeling lesser and, and, and wanting to have a different life. And they want to take something because they think these people must be in a better state of mind. They must have a better life than me. I mean, how come this is happening? And they're coming from a place of, of, of non-truth. 
And I think that's what we need to talk about later on when we return from break. So stay tuned because we're talking about how you can create your best reality. Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back in, we'll be back in two shakes. Turn it up and jump in the deep end on Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. The water's warm and there's a swim-up bar. Glass of perspective, anyone? Now, here's Ashley. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. In tonight's show, we're discussing your reality. You know, FYI, we create our own reality. Whoa, wowzer! Reality! Wow! Ding, 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 ding. What do we have for Johnny? Well, we have a, a lot of nice party gifts. No, you create your own reality. And we're talking about how you can create your best reality ever. And, and right before the break, we were discussing about how social media is the BS of reality. About how Eric called it Insta-sham, which I thought was great. I've never heard that before in my life, and I thought that was kind of interesting. You heard it first on Perspectives. Yeah, I heard I it here. Insta-sham. E-Harmony came up with that. And you know... We're talking about Eric, not not the, uh, website. Not, not the o- online dating not site, the right? Online dating site. So yeah, so we're talking about you know how a lot of times we all compare our lives to social media people. They might be friends of ours, and you know some of y'all even compare to people you don't even know. Okay, let's be honest. But some of y'all compare yourselves to your friends, and and it's like you have to sit there and look at the reality of the situation. One, the best lighting. Two, they probably took the picture a million times. Three. They're only showing you the best of the best of the best, and you're also extrapolating the mean, and you're extrapolating all the meat. I mean, think about it. When somebody says they're going to a beach house, you don't envision uh, a two-bedroom trailer. You envision a huge mansion on the beach, and you go, oh, it must be nice. It must be nice. You got a big mansion on the beach. Ah, that must be nice. Nobody thinks about the terms of reality. Okay, and so when you're thinking about those things and comparing, you just got to stop because you can never compare to that because it's not a real thing. You can't compare it to fake. Fake doesn't compare to reality. So if you learn one thing tonight, minimize your time on social media. And, and I've been talking to some of my clients about that. And, you know, a lot of people are averaging like six hours a day. Seriously? Oh, my God. Six Serious? hours a day. That's just ridiculous. People do it at night. They go to sleep doing it. They wake up in the morning. And, 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 oh, I, and I advise God. halving your time in half. And I really advise really getting it down about an hour, hour and a half and doing social media when you're not lucid and when you're not just waking up and when you're not just going to bed. Because that can contaminate your thoughts and can really seep into your subconscious. Well, Ashley, I think that you just uh, made the the point I was trying to make in the first hour a lot better than, than I did. In order to make your own reality, you have to be realistic. Otherwise, it becomes fantasy. And yeah. social media, I'm sorry, is all about fantasy. Okay. Yeah. And and uh, so if if you know if your whole life is uh, being spent on social media, that's not reality. So you I, may think it's reality. So I need to take down that picture that I put on on social media with my head on Idris Alba's body. Yeah, the, the one you photoshopped. Yeah, yeah. And, so uh, I need to do that. You know, that but everybody that's, was looking at the picture, going, "Oh, that's complete- oh look at him." That, yeah. Well, yeah. actually, you can go ahead and leave it up there. In your case, we know it's not realistic. <laughs> okay. We, okay. We, we knew it was photoshopped. Yeah. So go ahead and leave it there. But it's, I figured no, my, no harm done. I figured if I put my brown head on a brown body, that would that would pass. No. I was thinking about putting my brown head on Brad Pitt's body, but. That was a little bit too far. So, yeah. oh, but you know what? Somebody would probably, like some people would probably would have done. Yeah. It's like, look at him. He's got a brown head with a white oh man's God. body. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So somebody would have bought it. Somebody yeah. would have bought it. Yeah. And that's how far gone we are. Yeah. Well, like one example before I go, I don't want to go too far off on this. One example, I remember seeing a picture um, of somebody I know. And they had a picture of them and Elton John. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Tell us. Tell us. Tell us. Tell us. They had was, a picture of Elton John. Was it me, Ashley? No. Okay. Because no, you're I f- good. You're, okay. You're okay. in the clear on this one. Okay, cool, cool. And a picture of Elton John, and I think they were in Vegas. And I, seen, I know who you're talking about. And I've seen <laughs> and I've seen I've seen Elton John uh twice. Um He and, looks good. Yeah, and I and I've never met him though. I mean, I've never met him in person. And when I saw that I was like, Oh wow, that's great, you know. I was like, I always kinda wanted to meet the guy, you know. But you know, I didn't get too down on it, but I just accepted it. Well, it was funny because I was like, man, they, they get to meet everybody. Well, I ended up meeting somebody that was with those people that had the picture. Like, I knew them. I didn't realize they were all together in a group in Vegas. And I said, like, man, that must have been nice to meet Elton John. The response is, what do you mean, meet Elton John? 
I go, you had a picture together. And they go, oh, man, we happen to be in the same elevator. And -and so-and-so pushed it so much to get a picture that when we got out of the elevator, they begged Elton John. We took a quick picture, and they ran off. I mean, we got one picture, and that was it. And I'm thinking from my perspective, from a person looking at Instagram, I look at it and I go, Oh, it must be nice hanging out with Elton John. They must have right, gone on an after right. party. They must be having dinner together. Oh, look at the lap of luxury. When in actuality, they accosted a poor man in the elevator on the way to his concert and begged for a picture, and they put that out there, and everybody else thinks, oh, they must be best friends. <laughs> Nobody just thinks they accosted the poor man in that's, the elevator. That's disgusting. Isn't that crazy? They only see that point in time, but they don't see the the, the, the dynamics that cause that point in time you, to be. You know, uh, That's scary. Uh, isn't that scary? That's disgusting. You know, Erica... You know, I, I went to uh, a, a college to study uh, radio, television, film. Uh-huh. Okay, I did too. And uh, it's, are you okay so, because so, you so didn't go to Texas A and M? Are you okay now? Oh, I'm more than okay. Okay, I, mean, I just uh, wanted to make sure. But go ahead, go ahead. Go I, ahead, I was go ahead, go ahead. I was way overqualified for Texas A and M. Believe me. Oh, um, that's what they put on the letter so you could feel know, good. No, it's, oh. it's, it's, it's because it's because I actually scored uh, 1500 on the SATs. You know, we so. are the Aggies. The Aggies are we. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh boy! I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But anyway, so what? What the first thing they teach you when uh, learning how to operate a camera, wh- whether it's a still camera or a TV camera or a film camera, is that nothing exists outside the frame. Yeah. Of that camera. Yep. Okay. Which is why you know you can manipulate the audience into seeing exactly what you mm-hmm. want them to see. The art okay? of movie making. Yeah. So yeah. So you know, in, in the to you. Bring it back to this example that Ashley said. Okay, you saw one moment in time, you know, some dude with, you know, Elton John. Oh, you know, we assume a lot of things. But you don't see beyond the frame of that uh, of that camera what, what's going on behind the scenes. And you didn't see what le- led up to it. You didn't yeah. see what happened after that. Yeah. yeah. So true. So, and, and that's the key. And a lot of times we're making choices based on these things that we don't even know. Choosing to say that our life is good or not good. Let's move on to the next concept, the idea of trying to change others. A lot of us out there, and I've done it myself, we try to change others instead of focusing on bettering ourselves. It's easier to try to change somebody, but it doesn't really ever work. We know why? Because whenever we look at, uh, at ourselves in the mirror, we see what we want to see. And uh, some whereas, of us don't see that, though. Well, I mean, it, well, that that's another you know topic entirely. We can get into that, but you know, I, I think we're better at seeing others, you know, rather than seeing ourselves. Because uh, you, you know, who wants to admit that we're imperfect? We don't want to admit that. I mean, come on. I mean, I'm I, I'm Bill because I am. <laughs> you, you know, I mean. Well, I think I mean I you you might not, but I think a lot of people, more people than not, see themselves as very flawed. And, and, and you're right, I, and I agree with what you're saying, too. Some people see themselves as not flawed at all. Um, that's more probably narcissistic than anything. Yeah, but but the dynamic is that they always see the other person as even more flawed. That, right. But that <laughs> person's got problems. Because, because yeah. it, it makes us feel better when we know that, oh, you know, the, the, the whole, uh, oh, what, what was the, actually, gosh, what, the memory on TV, you know, had all the crazy stuff Jerry going. Springer. Yeah, you know, the, the Jerry Springer syndrome. You know, well, at least we, I'm not as bad as them. At least I'm God, not as bad as them. God, that's disgusting. That guy's got five babies by five different women. It makes me want to throw up. That's disgusting. I know. At least I'm not as bad as them. Let me turn that on for an hour and feel that, that, better that, about that's myself. That's disgusting. That's that's lowest de- lowest common denominator existence. That that's that's and base. yet one of the highest rated TV programs for its time. What does that say about our society? I know. And I and right. I, yeah. 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 God bless our society. No <laughs> joke. God bless our society. So I think when we're trying to change others, though, whether it's a habit that somebody has, or a personal or, or an outlook or even appearances or personality. I mean, we have to look within ourselves and wonder why are we trying to change this person? What is so important about changing them? But then also, you know, really understanding within ourselves, why do we even choose to spend time with that person if we want them to change? Yeah. I mean, go find someone that's already the way you want them to be. Yeah, and I'll micro that down again. I'll bring up the parent example for all you parents out there, aspiring parents. You know, even though they're your kids, even though they share fifty percent of your DNA, even though they 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 culturally um, share various similarities, um, you can't change your kids. And so I realized early on, as a young parent, my first child, you know, you know, do this, do that, do this, do that, and and it didn't work. They rebelled even at a young age. And so what I realized was that I had to be the reality that I wanted them to be like. 
within words, their own context. By example. I need to, I needed to live by example. And yeah. so instead of me getting frustrated as a dad, you know, trying to raise daughters earlier on and my son came later, instead of me being frustrated, I said, you know what, let me go inward and let me be the character person. Let me be the type of person that they would hopefully aspire to be and or choose as a mate to some degree as they get older, especially the girls. I like that, the father factor, bringing that in is good. So when we return, we're going to talk about more about how you create your own reality and how you can begin to create a reality that's really awesome. Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in, we'll be back in two shakes. This is Jake Busey, and you're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess, and on tonight's show, we've been discussing about how you create your own reality. And more than that, we're discussing about how you can create the best reality ever. Right before the break, we were discussing about how we always have a tendency of trying to change others. And and I think it's kind of comical. And I've done it myself. And it doesn't really normally work out. And when I'm dealing with clients now in therapy or in coaching, I always like to ask when they're trying to change people... Formulative, if you, can you, if you can't deal with them now and, and you're already wanting to change them, maybe this isn't the right relationship. And then you also have to figure out why am I wanting to change this person? Why do I want to try to fix them? And, and I think we're so big on trying to fix others that we don't look at our own issues, that we don't look at trying to better ourselves. And I think a lot of times it's always about being better than you were yesterday. And I think if you can focus on that and not trying to be better than everybody else, not trying to sit there and say, well, at least I'm better than that guy, and look at yourself and say, well, hey, yesterday yesterday I didn't know this. And today I woke up and I realized something. I realized a different perspective. I understand a little more about why people do what they do. Oh, I've realized that more information than less information is a good thing when I'm trying to get my point across. Or oh, I realize that being hopeful and being respectful is, is the right way to deal with people. And maybe if people act different around me, it not, might not be because they're being rude. It might be because they're being shy. There's different aspects that we can realize about ourselves and really challenge ourselves to better ourselves to be better people. You know, the next thing I want to really focus on is to stop questioning yourself. A lot of us question ourselves on a daily basis. We question ourselves on everything we do. Some of us can't even move without questioning if we're moving in the right direction. Just walking, should I leave now? Should I not leave now? What should I do? And so instead of questioning yourself on every action or decision you make, let's change that and reverse that to believing in yourself. Um, When we begin to believe in ourselves that we have the ability to make concrete good decisions when we believe in ourselves and understand that we can create our reality and that we do have power all of a sudden guess what we have the power to use i mean it's almost like having a storefront right but you don't have a cashier you right. don't have a way to take any money yeah so you look at people and you go but well, do you have a you got a, you got exact change you know and there you are and so you're confined to just taking uh you're just taking cash and you're only confined to what they have. I mean, so if it's $22.18, do you have that? When in actuality, if you went and got a credit card reader and all this stuff, maybe you might be making more sales. Maybe the world might open up to you a little more when you give the option. And the same thing comes when, you know, when you're able to sit there and say, I make good decisions. I've made good decisions in the past. I've made bonehead decisions in the past. But I've learned from those bonehead decisions. And now I don't feel like um, I can't make a decision, but I make rational decisions based on the knowledge that I have. You know, actually, I think the underlying thing on that is, uh, you know, first of all, you have to know who you are and be confident in who you are, which is easier said than done. But uh, a lot of times uh, I think people question themselves out of insecurity. And you have to, and in order to know how you, who you are and to get to know you better, that's key. In order to get to know yourself better, you have to make decisions and feel confident about some of those decisions in your Even life. Even if yeah. the decisions don't always work out right, right, yeah. right Eric? And, and it's a process, and, and you learn a lot by sometimes those decisions not working out. But, you know, the, the, the coolest thing that I've experienced, and, and I remember this as a child because to some degree as a child, I used to feel um, extremely uh, non-empowered or unempowered because it was always the adults making the decisions. They dictated what I ate. They dictated where we live, what I wore, and all of these things. But as I became older as an adult— I was wonderfully liberated by the 
by the awareness and of, and the potential of creating my own reality. And I've been on a mad dash to do that um, ever since I understood that power. Um, and that liberated me from not being a victim or not being susceptible to others' thoughts and desires and others' dynamics. I have the power to do that, and I'm passing that on uh, to my kids as well. Be but, the change that you seek. You know, in, in uh, uh, our boy E. Harmony, I, I can tell that he's uh, confident in himself because any any man who would put uh, Gonzo in his stocking cap. I'm cool with that, man. You know, and, cool and, and, and allow Ashley to take a picture of I'm him. I'm cool with that. Then, uh, you know, that that's confidence right there. In fact, uh, you know, maybe we can uh, talk Ashley into posting that picture later. No, uh, no, we on, won't do I'm on, not that on, cool with it. On Instasham. <laughs> on Instasham. I'm not that cool with it. On Instasham. For a fee. You can post it for a fee. You can post that picture for $1,000. Uh, or a six-pack of beer. We need to show some skin if we're doing it for $1,000. How about we a six-pack of some beer? some charity. So some chocolate. We take a six-pack of beer? Ah, uh, nah. Okay. Nah, nah, nah. No, he wants more. I'm he's he's holding out for more. I want more. I'm creating a. I'm creating a more expensive reality. Come on, be, be confident in yourself. Allow others to see. <laughs> allow others to see your reality and Eric. all your Eric splendor. Yes, yes, yes. This is your reality. Let others yes, see it. Yes, yes. God scary. bless. God bless the reality. Yeah. So the next thing I want to talk about is knowing what you want and honestly going for it. Yeah. When you know what you want in life, you actually can figure it out. Like if you don't know what you want, then you, you can't aim. I know what I know what I don't want. Been there. Yeah, I well, know what I don't but want. A lot, a lot of us are in the same category too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. a lot of times it's it's a uh, process of elimination. Yeah, you know, yeah. And, and and you learn what you don't want usually through hard experience. Yeah, the school of hard knocks. So, uh, you know, raise your hand on this table if you got a PhD at the school of hard knocks. Yeah, I still you got know. the lumps to prove it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, the teacher over there, <laughs> I, I, I was a tenured professor, the there. school of hard so knocks. Th- there you go. But uh, but yeah. And, and, you know, of course, uh, and I'll t- I'll share something uh, with our listeners, Ashley. Um, and, uh, you know, and of course, I invite our listeners to share their experiences to, uh, when we're live tonight on Facebook please, and Twitter. Please. Um, and, and Ashley's handle is uh, at uh, Ashley Burgess. Um, I'll share this, uh, Ashley. Uh, you know, just recently uh, I've been uh, hired uh, to do a new job. Of course, of course, I'm still working for you. Of course, sweet, uh, sweet. But, we're uh, never going to let you go. Well, by the way, I, I, no, I was going to say we're going to embark. And I don't want to go. I, 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 I enjoy the show so much. Um, we and, enjoy you, babe. but also, you know, I, I, I do outside jobs, and and you know, f- for a while now, I've been doing kind of uh, uh, what do you call it? independent contracting, uh, just uh, kind of here there, you know, when I can get it. Uh, but now I've been hired on to do a, a steady job, and uh, it, it was kind of the break I was looking for. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's another step in the journey. And uh, uh, but you know, it's it's something I've been striving for for a long time, and uh, and I feel really good about it. Congratulations. Thank you. And it's all steps, and and you have to, and there's going to be things that you know like kind of take you down and try to take you off course. But if you really believe in what you're doing, you'll be steadfast and you'll stick to it. I mean, I've I've been through some stuff. You know, at this career day, I just did. You know, they said. Um, you know, how long you've been doing what you did? And I told them, and then they were like, you know, and I said, you have to stick true to it. And they're like, well, what do you mean? And I try, I explained to them, you know, there's things that are going to try to get in your way. You're going to also allow things to get in your way and you're going to have to step back and say, do I want this bad enough? Is this important to me? Is this what I really want? Or is this what I thought I want? And it's okay. It's okay to make changes. It's okay to sit there and say, you know what? I had this plan, this master plan, and it's not exactly what I want. And, in, and at that point in time, you really need to sit down and focus your life and say, what is it that I want? Because, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I have ideas on what happens after this lifetime. We won't go into that right now. However, I do know that this is this is this lifetime. And you have this lifetime to create something. You have it to create something that you are very happy with or you have it to create something that you're very regretful of. And and the, and the more we hold ourselves back and the more we're not attuned to what we want and what's right for us, it, it gives us more of a playground later on to sit there and say, man, I really regretted that. Or, yeah, yeah. you know, I held myself back. Or, you know, people that aren't conscious of themselves go, other people held me back. Yeah. You know, Ashley, first of all, I just got to say I admire you uh, for giving back in that way to kids. Uh, that's something that I've always done. And I know Bill you know, does his Amen. part as yeah. well. And, and uh, what you're doing by taking time out of your busy day, uh, being the celebrity that you are, uh, taking time to go impact children uh, is powerful because what you're doing uh, by your presence, your words, your perspective, you're giving them the tools 
that they can in turn use to form their own reality. And, and it all matters. It all matters. And even though sometimes those kids seem like they don't listen, uh, you know, they're, they're scratching their heads. What, what, what do you mean seem? Yeah. What do you mean seems? They seem bored. Every word you speak and the presence that you uh, provide lives forever in their subconscious. And, and once you understand that, then you understand that. Yeah. And that's a cool thing. Thank you. And I, and I, I agree with you. And it was interesting to see all the eye contact I got when they were able to show me eye contact and even little smiles, you know, um, and very intent thought where they knew that other class members weren't looking at them. And it was a very interesting thing. And you saw the kids that what I was talking about really meant something to them. Yeah. Um, you know, when I was talking about family issues and what have you, I really, really hit home with a lot of these kids. That's real. And you could tell which ones really took something from it and their life's going to be better. You know, because they're going to have some tools that they didn't have. Bingo. And they're going to, and, and the other ones, some of the other ones that are yawning and doing this and that, it all suck in, sunk in. Now, it's in their subconscious. And eventually it'll do something. But you know what? It was all about the message that needed to be, that needed to be there. And it wasn't anything that I had practiced. I just showed up. Keep it real. So stay tuned. We're going to talk more about how you can create this awesome reality for yourself. Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back in, we'll be back in two shakes. I can lift you up I can show you what you want to see And take you where you want to be Get in here and give us your perspective We're listening You're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess Welcome back live to Perspectives And I'm your host Ashley Burgess And on tonight's show we've been discussing how you Create your own reality We've been also going a little bit deeper Analyzing how you can actually create your best reality ever and right before the break, we were discussing about how we need to stop questioning ourselves and begin to believe in ourselves because that really helps us out in our lifestyle. Because when we start making choices and we make decisions and we believe in those decisions, we start going in a direction where we're conscious of what's right for us. We feel it. We make good decisions because we allow ourselves to make those decisions. And lastly but not least, before we do a really good summary here, I think the last but not least thing is to really allow ourselves to be vulnerable, to allow ourselves to be loved, and to allow ourselves to show emotion. Which that is, uh, I can speak from my own, my own personal experience how difficult that is for some people. I spent most of my life uh, with a wall around me. I built up a wall, and uh, um, it took many, many years, you know, to knock that wall down. And I, and I would say this, you know, it may not even be totally down, at, at, you know, at some point. But, uh, you know, if, if I learned that if, if you want to have relationships with, with people, whether it's a romantic relationship, relationship with your family, friends, you know, whatever, you have to put yourself out there. You have to take that risk of, you know, maybe somebody, you know, taking advantage of you or harming you. But just because one person does it doesn't mean that everybody's going to do it. Yeah, it, it's part of the whole counterintuitiveness of human existence. You know, it, most of the things that are... Uh, enduringly beneficial and powerful initially seem counterintuitive, you know, uh, yes. put, you, you, you know, m most things, you know, swimming, you know, you know, jumping in water. Oh, my God, I got to hold my breath. It's a counterintuitive thing subconsciously. And and I agree, Bill, especially for guys. It's tough putting yourself out there. But the biggest reward I've gotten in my life is when I put stuff out there as a guy. And I and, and, and thank God, uh, you know, I'm, I've been at the point for a very long time to where I'm not afraid to show emotion. That's part of my humanness. And for me to suppress emotion is suppressing my humanness. Um, and so I dig it, man. I get it. I understand. And I think for everybody out there that's a dog lover or an animal lover, a cat lover, I mean, to put it in perspective in that realm, you know, our animals, unless it's like an African gray or something like that, is going to die before you do. And, and a lot of times it can it, it's very emotional. You're losing a family member. And I've had some people in my life that they lost an animal and, and they can't they're like, I can't ever have another one. I can't go through that pain again. But the amount of joy that a pet brings in your life, it's so sad that you can't ever go through that again. Like there's there's so much greater payout. There's so much awesome love and just fun and experiences that you get from having that animal in your life that some people just close themselves off because they never want to experience that again and, and to me it's 
It's kind of sad. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, it's like, you know, I don't want to ever meet another person that I love because they could hurt me or they're going to leave me or they're going to die. And that's part of life, man. People are going to go and people are going to leave. But if you don't allow yourself to feel and allow yourself to love and to appreciate what's around you and then to accept the fact that there is going to be some pain, probably, but the good is going to over and outweigh the pain always, always. It just is. And and that's an acceptance thing. And and there's also another component of life is that we're supposed to have feelings. And in order to experience the human condition, it all can't be the same. Okay? It just all can't be the same. You've got to have different pieces of the puzzle to create an entire picture. And sometimes that might not be what we consider um, comfortable. Sometimes that might not be considered happy. But in all in all, it creates these pieces of this puzzle and it creates a life that's like really rich and dynamic in, in several dimensions. Yeah, you know, it's funny I, when you were talking about that, uh, Ashley, about the pain and, 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 and going through the pain to create something. I think a lot about music. As you guys know, I'm a big jazz fan. And, and when you read some of the liner notes and autobiographical, auto, autobiographical notes from, you know, folks like Miles Davis, uh, folks like Thelonious Monk and, and those kinds of guys, you know, from way back, their, their sessions were painful. Um, 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 each musician had something to bring, but bringing it all together was oftentimes painful. But when they pushed through the pain, when they pushed through the human emotion, when they pushed through all of those dynamics, they created music that will eternally live uh, in our universe, um, which is jazz as we know it. And so sometimes you got to go through that um, to get through that, to get to that higher level. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't fear the pain. Don't fear the pain. I keep thinking, don't fear the reaper. Reaper. <laughs> the reaper. The, the reaper. Don't fear the reaper. And they yeah. did one version. Blue, that Blue was Oyster Cult. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, but uh, yeah, Eric. I mean, uh, it, it, again, you know, something that you uh, were saying earlier, counterintuitive. Don't fear the pain. Well, you, you know, you, and you, don't look for it either. Don't sit there and anticipate it wincing. the whole time. You're I, wincing I know, through I, life. Wincing. I know, I know some people. Who, Why are you who wincing? Look for pain? Because I'm anticipating pain. <laughs> but it might I mean, happen in 30 years. I don't know, but I'm, it might. But I'm wincing now, preparing for it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, don't fear the pain. I mean, the other shoe's gonna fall <laughs> eventually. <laughs> That's the, your reality. <laughs> right. used to, that used to be my reality. The other know, shoe's right? going to fall? Uh, uh-uh, I don't believe in that and anymore. And you spend your you whole life waiting for the shoe. the other shoe will always fall. Yeah, <laughs> if, if, if you're waiting yeah. for it, yeah. Exactly. yeah. I mean, and, and I think a lot of times we create this reality based on limited knowledge base of our limited. growing up. Yep. Limited knowledge base of what we believe to be reality. Instead of like, there, and, and it might, the funniest comment in the world, if you think about it, is that comment, sky is the limit. Sky's definitely not the limit. I mean, sky's far from the limit. And if you think about our limiting comments, no matter how big they seem, that's a very limiting comment. There is no sky. There is no limit. There is no sky. There is no limit. There's outer space. There's no sky. Yeah, there's no sky. <laughs> I mean, there's a sky in a picture that you drew when you were yeah. five and six years yeah, old, and some people no... painted it blue, and other people might have done green. If, if, if only you two could have seen what you look like while well, ago. There's no sky. There's no limit. There's no sky. There's no limit. There's no sky. There's no limit. It's, it's like... I love this show. <laughs> but think about it. No, think about it. There is no sky. I love our listeners, too. Yeah, I love them. And there is no sky. And if you and if you paint a picture at home and you paint a sky, that's great. But you know, outside of that canvas, there is really no sky. There's no sky. There's no limit. There's no limit. And so sky is not the limit. And if you think sky is the limit, then okay. Then you're limited. But you're limited. <laughs> I mean, you created limits for yourself. And, and and you know, why deal? Why actually deal yourself that hand? It, it's like dealing yourself the hand, and you take all the aces and the kings and the queens and the jacks out, and you go, okay, we got uh, twos to tens, and uh, <laughs> and let's see what happens. And I'm gonna give. Give all the aces, kings, queens, and jacks to uh, to Bill. I don't know why Bill keeps winning. Bill's always winning. Well, because you've given your, you've cut the deck. Yeah, you've cut the deck against yourself. Yeah, you stacked it against. And yourself. Bill doesn't yeah. believe there's a limit on the deck, so he's got the kings and the queens, and he's doing it, and he's got yours too now at this point because you don't believe in it. I don't like Bill. <laughs> well. I don't like you, Bill. Fine, you're then. always winning. But let's let's take it outside then. You're such I'm a, in Bill's you're, will. You're such a winner. I can't stand you. You're I, such a winner. I am a winner. <laughs> I'm in Bill's Deal will. Deal with it. Deal with I'm it. I'm in Bill's will, by the way. I'm in his will. The more you win, the more I lose, Bill, and that ticks me off. Oh man. well, th- then you're just gonna have but to. You both take me off. Being a loser, ladies and gentlemen, you've just heard the skit on how not to be. <laughs> 
or I'm going to sulk about it and then, and look at y'all with green with envy and then not show up. Yeah, yeah. I, I had other things to do. How not people, to be. Other people to hang out with. How other not people. to be. So a few tips to create this awesome reality for yourself is to feel safe about expressing your love, to also accept love. It's the same concept as accepting a gift. Love, love. Don't feel bad. Don't get angry when someone gives you a gift. Accept the love. Accept the caring. Be there. Power to the people, says Eric. And also, what about the concept of the willingness to not know what's always going to happen? I mean, the Which future's is scary. not told. That's, that's scary for so some people. So is that counterintuitive thing again? Yep. The future's not told, and we don't know what the future is going to, to, to give us. And, and, and that's key. And if you realize that, don't be hung up with what's going to happen. Be part of the journey. Get in the journey. Express yourself. As well as to let go. Try not to be such a control freak. I mean, there's a lot of people listening tonight, and I've done it myself, where you try to control everything, and guess what? It all falls apart. Because you don't really control anything. You, can, you control what you do. You control how you act. And you control yourself within certain perimeters. But other than that, you can't control other people. You can't control the environment. You can't control what Mother Earth decides to do tomorrow. I mean, you know, unless unless you have part of the reason why something's happening. But other than that, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, we're just talking about some stuff that's going on. Anyway, but in all actuality, you create your own reality by being who you are, by creating a lifestyle that's appropriate, by choosing happiness instead of unhappiness. By embracing and not fighting your personal power. By choosing a healthy core of people to spend time with. And by not trying to change others, but to better yourself on a daily basis. If you remember these things and you put any of these into practice, your life will be better, more rich, and more fulfilling. Eric, great show. Yes, uh, I am going to go create a reality of Chinese food tonight. Mm. Yummy. I may just tag along with you on that Yummy, reality. yummy. We can share that, that reality. Make that my reality. Yeah, great show, Ashley. Love it, love it. Listeners, love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Let's do it. I'm in it. Bill, awesome show. Thank you very much. And I'm going to uh, not only work on creating a better reality, I'm going to work on uh, making it more realistic. Can I visit your reality? You can. Solid. We're part of it. Solid. We're part of it. I'm glad to be in your reality. So stay tuned. Next week we have a great show. And remember that you create your own reality. Nobody else. Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back in, we'll be back in three shakes.